EPA Ireland's climate change assessment. It'd be a useful opportunity to to consider some of the issues, but also consider UCD's contribution um, or lack thereof in terms of uh, contributors and, and large scale authorship. Uh, we have a number of people who've contributed from UCD. We're going to say a few words. Unfortunately, Neve Moore Cherry is unwell today, but Gerald has kindly agreed at the last minute to um, give a little contribution. He had an input to the to the report as well. Um, the other person who's going to welcome is Tiger Mahoney. Tiger Mahoney has just joined UCD. He was an co or he was an author of it, whilst in a capacity a research fellow in DCU. So he's just joined in the system professor in environmental policy here in UCD. He just started a few weeks ago, so he's kindly agreed to say a few words as well. So I'm going to hand over to Leanna Ritchie. Leanna Ritchie is an assistant professor in environmental policy, and she's co lead of the climate team in the Earth Institute. Um, just by way of a bit of background, we have two other co-leads. One, Paul Murphy, who's in agriculture. Another, Trassa um, Lockery, who's in English drama and film studies. So we're trying to promote that interdisciplinary uh, motivation across the different units in the in the uh, membership. So let's hand over to Leanna now. Thanks, Ryan, and uh, good afternoon, um, everyone. So I'm happy to uh, chair and to... Um, um, say a few words about the report. I will just say the structure and uh, what is in it, and then I will end over to Ty, Florence, and maybe Gerald to share their experience, sorry, and share their experience on the report, their contribution and their perspective. So the report was published, as you may know, you know, about one month ago. I just press it, it's off. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, great. And uh, this is the, you know, the um, statement from the program manager, of the EPA, saying that obviously is the major, the first assessment. Uh, I should say, as you know, for, um, um, and major contribution for policymaking researchers, and is uh, important because all the science in there. So it's it's really a point of reference. So the. So it's not for so you. Okay, I speak now. So the um, it's the first really comprehensive uh, collection of science, and we'll see there are four uh, volumes, and uh, obviously there are some challenges, as you may know. The highlights are that uh, really the emission targets need to be met uh, um, in Ireland uh, in the future, and that's eighty six percent of the uh, energy is still uh, based on fossil fuels. And uh, actually the EU just released uh, on 6th of February the new proposed uh, target for the 2040. So that's also important. And for adaptation, um, there is the need to implement the existing measures and also to um, identifying other measures. So as I said, there are four volumes. The first three are um, on uh, climate science, mitigation, and adaptation, basically. And they link, they are uh, structured um, following the structure of the IPPA, uh, IP, sorry, IPCC um, six assessment report. So the first volume on climate science, island climate challenge assessment is uh, based on um, the knowledge from the working group um, one. And also integrate, obviously, the knowledge at the national level from the EPA, from Iran, and from the Marine Institute. Um, the second volume is on mitigation. So it's talking about what are the emissions levels, what are the targets, and what are the different sectors, and how they, how Ireland can um, um, address the emission gaps, and how what are the uh, action to um, reduce um, greenhouse gas emissions. The third volume is on adaptation. So it's um, giving an overview of the main impacts across different sectors going from um, agriculture, uh, coastal areas, settlements, and um, many other sectors, biodiversity, of course, uh, that are really affected by um, environmental uh, change and is also um, integrating the um, knowledge from the high computing um, center for the, in Ireland. And also they integrate the knowledge from the special report from the IPCC. So uh, the fourth volume is 
uh, the one that is a bit different from what is the usual part of the IPCC. So it's trying to integrate mitigation, adaptation, and going towards a transformative change. So it's trying to keep together, you know, the different dimension, highlighting the importance of justice and the fact that uh, together with, uh, you know, reducing greenhouse gas emissions and implementing adaptation options, there is maybe the need also to rethink development model that are um, already applied. So that's probably the um, the volume that is a bit different from the usual part of the IPCC and the usual assessment report. So I will stop here and um, I will hand over to Tyke and Florence to share, as we said, their uh, contribution to the report, their perspectives, and maybe some thought about involvement of UCD research in climate research and in future assessment reports. So thanks. Stand up here, it would be easier. Good morning or good afternoon, everybody. Um, it's it's uh, really great to be in, in UCD. I've just uh, actually joined. So um, Owen mentioned earlier that I was a research fellow in DCU at the time of the production of this report. Um, it, of course, again, it's four volumes, so mirroring IPCC. Uh, science impacts and policy, but what was interesting was added on it's actually a brainwave from Frank McGovern in the, in the EPA, I, I spoke to him to find out who it was, to focus on the benefits and opportunities of transformation. So this is something quite diff uh, different, I suppose. There is a challenge to um, move away from talking about just costs and uh, um, investment and negatives to, to some degree. Uh, and the literature is quite clear that transformations can bring huge um, synergies and benefits, economic, social, uh, and environmental. So the um, framing of the Irish assessment was to include this, this unique volume. Um, I'd maybe give some overall observations on the different volumes. In terms of volume one on uh, climate science, it, it's relatively straightforward in terms of the major conclusions on what needs to be contributed. Enhancing of climate observations and climate modeling. Um, to improve that in Ireland and our contribution to the international literature and international organizations. Volume two, again, is relatively straightforward in terms of uh, acknowledging uneven assessment of uh, sectors, something that's come through in um, Climate Council conclusions. Um, a lack of consistent uh, approach to applying scenarios that underpin analysis. Um, some of the uh, um, unique pieces, I, I suppose, would be um, the... Uh, low probability, high impact events. So things like the Gulf Stream, the uh, AMOC, as it's known in, in, in the literature, Atlantic Meridional Overturn Circulation. It's quite a quite a, a, a term to try and just even uh, 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 articulate. Um, and cascading risks, the focus on adaptation processes, so things, taking in things like governance, taking in things like finance, also nature-based and systemic solutions, rather than just hard uh, engineering, a focus on monitoring, but those, I suppose, are all uh, relatively straightforward. I think it gets interesting, or for me, maybe because I was a, an author on volume four on transformational development, economy, innovation, finance, on transformational livelihoods, and transformational policy and governance. These are all about bringing new practices to Ireland. We, when we try to develop more the uh, fourth volume, we were focused on the benefits and opportunities of transitions and transformations. Transitions being more technological and economic, transformations being more fundamental systems change, including the development path that Liana uh, just mentioned. There's a very strong conclusion in the literature from the last 10 to 15 years that we can't meet uh, climate neutrality without transformational approaches. But the good news story is that transformational approaches have significant synergies and benefits for society and for economy. So we kind of, in some ways, moved a little bit away from transitions, which are there already in volume two, to focus on systemic transformations. The conclusion then being, and it's a high confidence conclusion in the literature, that technological transitions on their own are not enough, um, that we uh, uh, things like carbon pricing and economic instruments are very useful, but again, not enough on their own. We need systems change that change structures and practices. An example would be changing spatial planning and changing transport planning instead of just relying on changing uh, vehicles. Um, there are some considerable gaps we can find then in terms of understanding mitigation, uh, 
we need transformational approaches that go across disciplines, so inter and transdisciplinary approaches. We need alternative scenarios, so those are alternative development paths, but also ways of, of, of encompassing uncertainty, because a lot of the approaches we're using at the moment are single point forecasts. We don't address that, and that's not the standard in the international literature or international policy at the moment. Um, and also that focus on synergy, so not only looking at systemic changes, the what and the how of what that is and what that could be and all of the benefits um, uh, from that, but the, the, the how we can uh, actually enable these systemic changes and the benefits uh, we can get from that and the analysis we need to do to, uh, to, to improve. So I suppose to conclude, I think one of the, and it's very easy for a researcher to say this, there are independent observers have shown that uh, funding for environmental research in Ireland has not been sufficient. It's not coming up to the metrics that are there internationally. The um, a lot of the funding is not is is more towards sectors other than environment and energy. For example, um, there's a lot of uh, funding for uh, for agricultural research, but not enough for for uh, energy and environment. We also need to change the focus of the research we're doing within there to spread it around. So we're looking at. Um, the full range of measures, the full range of solutions. So those are systemic solutions as well as the technology and um, and, and the uh, economic instruments. Um, and that can bring us to climate neutrality and that can bring us to the, the synergies and opportunities. In terms of where UCD can go with this, I think you can kind of see that I, I think there's a pivot in the literature. It, it, it is it's kind of identified now as the transformative turn happened in the literature in 2005, that it was an exponential growth in transformations terminology and transformational uh, research. I think we can expand that in Ireland. I think we can and, and have shown, shown in many ways that we can pivot quite quickly, quickly in many different areas. We have done it in economic policy, in COVID policy, in rolling out um, uh, uh, the, 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 the first electricity program in Ireland with Ardna Kusha, um, and people could also I suppose, focus on even social and cultural changes that we've had. We have done this before. We need to adopt an innovation mindset and I suppose move towards articulating those benefits and opportunities of where, where um, we can go. So uh, thank you, Leanna. Thank you very much, Shaikh. Thanks a lot. And um, I will call Florence now if you'd like to share your experience in working on the report and perspectives. Well, thanks. Thank you. Um... Okay, so uh, I contributed to um, volume one, I forgot what it's called, <laughs> um, science, climate science. So obviously coming from a scientific, mostly point of view, but very much so, so I'm a peatland scientist, so yeah, data collection, but my, I've been lucky that um, I see Frank is there. Do you remember Frank, more than 20 years ago, we, we had this first peatland project, Bogland, which was a sustainable, the first sustainable project in Ireland. So I suppose I've been working in that space where we gather environmental evidence, we, we, we gather data, and then we transfer it to potential to help policymakers. And that was always my, everything, you know, all the publication, even though it was very scientific, very, um, uh, you know, biology-based, greenhouse gas measurements, all that. Um, all my all the papers that I've been involved with were really pointing to recommendations for policymakers. So that led me to be, first of all, a lead uh, author in one of the intergovernmental panel of climate change. So that was obviously very interesting. So I knew already, having contributed to several of those reports, how it works. So um, when it came to peatland, obviously um, being twenty percent of the land in Ireland. It had to be representative here, so as a, uh, I was called to 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 bring in my expertise in that, which I suppose I have um, I've been lucky to work at sort of crossroads between lots of disciplines, and again that's a very important point when you want to contribute to study climate change because one discipline really doesn't see uh, doesn't see the impact on other things, and that has been with peatlands it's really a big a big problem. Um, so that's how I got to really, uh, I don't know if you have very specific questions, please just ask, I'm, I'm, I am I'm, try to answer them, but that's how I, I contributed to, to it through all the, basically 25 years of, of, of uh, understanding what, what the, the issue with peatlands. Peatlands was, is funny because it, 
nobody cared about pecans when I started, I remember. <laughs> and then there, there were the, we call it the Cinderella syndrome. There suddenly it's like, oh, it's it's our star. It's it's so much carbon that we have to look at. So suddenly we all wanted to, to know about it. And now there is even a bigger resurgence. So in terms of UCD now and, and potential uh, work, there is a huge space here. Now, I spend a lot of time in the field and I can tell you it's, it's one of those jobs where you spend a lot of time in the wet wellies. And, and of course, it takes takes time and it's time consuming field work. And the whole impetus now to inform this is to move to better way to collect data. So there's a huge area there. EO, so Earth observation to replace the two legged bipeds that keep measuring because it's really, really time consuming. And we have so many of it and so little time because that's the other problem with peatlands. They affect the climate, but they are being currently re-affected by the climate much faster than we thought. So they, they, they are the, the positive feedback loops. They're getting, they, they got degraded. They were impacting the climate, but now warmer weather is getting even um, this this loop uh, more accelerated. If we don't do something now, this is this is really going to be a a, a big problem now. I don't know if you remember from when I remember sitting at a conference in 2005 at the EPA saying Ireland will have a peatland problem and then nobody really uh, said anything. Now we're 20 years on nearly. Uh, we have a big, even a bigger problem. But in terms of um, uh, benefits, mm -hmm. and I think you're right, it is not just the negatives. And we're bringing on an awful lot of um, uh, projects with the science. So basically, uh, not just us looking at what's interesting. The community wants to know what's interesting about peatland. So we need to join with those uh, projects and studies and data. What does the community want? Uh, what do they need to, I think the solution is there. So I'm, I'm. you call it about an inflection at the moment. I think in, in my area, it's more, it's this inflection I'd like to see is to do more science, but um, that would help people who can actually make a difference on the ground. And that's not the scientists, it's the people who actually live on near the bogs, near those land uses, and they can do something. Uh, they have far more power. So I, I just would like to point out that, as well as the uh, Earth observation area and all the AI stuff, obviously, that's coming now, now on board. So that's what I have to say, really. Um, not sure are there are any questions. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. I don't know if there are any questions. Um... And Gerard, you would like to say something about your involvement and perspective. And then we can open to the questions. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Um, my name is Gerard Mills. I'm in geography here, and I mostly study the climates of cities, um, which are generally not studied in this country. Um, so most of my work is international. So in the rank order, I'm probably the lowest the level of author here because I was responsible for a box. And the box was about something called the urban heat island. It was a small section. So I can't really comment on the overall structure, but I can talk about, for example, Maynut's leadership in this area, which I think um, we shouldn't try to challenge it. That'd be my view. I think what you're looking at here is an outcome of John Sweeney's establishment of a program and study at Maynut. It's gone back maybe 25 years at this stage. And they're very well placed to do the type of collation that you see in this type of work. Now, I think it was hit and miss about how they put it together in terms of who they contact and all the rest. But nevertheless, they're very well positioned to do so for a number of reasons. One is that not only do they have a climate center there that's been there for 20 years and a whole range of PhD students and master's students doing work connected very closely to groups like Chagas, but they also have in addition a access to all the spatial data that's available in the country with all the licensing agreements and all that's needed to use it. Now, this, until you actually try to look for data and then try to use it, it's very hard to beat this. I know the people at Maynooth very, very well, um, but I mostly work on the science side. So I work with Rowan Feeder on a project called Terrain AI. And Terrain AI is basically put together the complete science infrastructure for the country including, for example, instrumentation, flux towers. And then my responsibility, along with my colleague here, Ankur Sati, is to do modeling of carbon dioxide methane emissions across the entire island. The biggest challenges I think actually that we're going to face is that you know, when I start to compare the emissions that come off Northern Ireland versus, say, the Republic, and this is supposed to be the common basis for reporting, there's absolutely no link between the two at all. 
So I'd like to move towards a, an all-island approach, which I think makes some nice challenges because that means going across the boundary and it means making sure that our data sets on both sides of the island, in terms of the infrastructure also, because I fundamentally believe that's the scale of management we should look at. Um, there's a real opportunity for us. But in terms of, say, the leadership by May Nuth here, I think they should be congratulated and we should look to support them and bring the areas we're very strong at, we were talking earlier on own. I think health is a big missing part of all these reports. And we've got a very, very strong medical pool here that we should really bring to bear. We are present here in things like architecture and the built environment to some respect. But climate change and the built environment here are like two different things, even though that's where most of the energy is going, that and transport. Um, so I think the way for us maybe to engage better would be to ask the authors, Connor Murphy, et cetera, from Maynu to tell us, because I assume they see this as part of a pattern, and this is effectively AR1, and there will be an AR2, to ask them to think strategically about how they might include us better. Um, from my perspective, UCD has always been incoherent on the climate front. I mean, lots of little patches, people doing work, but I've never seen any framework put in place by which we actually do serious climate change work in a coherent fashion. So, good luck. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, and uh, I think you, you touched some really important points. Something I also uh, forgot to mention that the report, the two, the first two, the volume one and two, sorry, they end with the recommendation, obviously, and the other two, the three and four, they end with a list of knowledge gaps. And you mentioned some of them. So, it, uh, I mean, from my perspective, it's really important to see where what they are and what is uh, the, the link with what we do and uh, also if there are other knowledge gaps that maybe they they may be considered.